This thing in front of you, this issue, this obstacle, this frustrating, unfortunate, problematic, unexpected problem preventing you from doing what you want to do. That thing you dread or secretly hope will never happen. What if it wasn't so bad? What if embedded inside it or inherent in it were certain benefits? Benefits only for you. What would you do? What do you think most people would do? Probably what they've always done. And what you're doing right now. Nothing. Let's be honest. Most of us are paralyzed. Whatever our individual goals, most of us sit frozen before the many obstacles that lie ahead of us. We wish it weren't true, but it is. What blocks us is clear. Systemic, decaying institutions, rising unemployment, skyrocketing costs of education, and technological disruption. Individual, too short, too old, too scared, too poor, too stressed, no access, no backers, no confidence. How skilled we are at cataloging what holds us back. Every obstacle is unique to each of us, but the response they elicit are the same. Fear, frustration, confusion, helplessness, depression, anger. You know what you want to do, but it feels like some invisible enemy has you boxed in, holding you down with pillows. You try to get somewhere, but something invariably blocks the path, following and thwarting each move you make. You have just enough freedom to feel like you can move, just enough to feel like it's your fault when you can't seem to follow through or build momentum. We're dissatisfied with our jobs, our relationships, our place in the world. We're trying to get somewhere, but something stands in the way, so we do nothing. We blame our bosses, the economy, our politicians, other people, or we write ourselves off as failures or our goals as impossible, when really one thing is at fault, our attitude and approach. There have been countless lessons and books about achieving success, but no one ever taught us how to overcome failure, how to think about obstacles, how to treat and triumph over them, and so we are stuck. Beset on all sides, many of us are disoriented, reactive and torn. We have no idea what to do. On the other hand, not everyone is paralyzed. We watch in awe as some seem to turn those very obstacles which stymie us into launching pads for themselves. How do they do that? What's the secret? Even more perplexing, earlier generation faced worse problems with fewer safety nets and fewer tools. They dealt with the same obstacles we have today plus the ones they worked so hard to try to eliminate for their children and others. And yet, we're still stuck. What do these figures have that we lack? What are we missing? It's simple. A method and a framework for understanding, appreciating and acting upon the obstacles life throws at us. John D. Rockefeller had it. For him it was cool-headedness and self-discipline. Demosthenes, the great Athenian orator, had it. For him, it was a relentless drive to improve himself through action and practice. Abraham Lincoln had it. For him, it was humility, endurance and compassionate will. There are other names you'll see again and again in this book. Ulysses S. Grant, Thomas Edison, Margaret Thatcher, Samuel Zimmery, Amelia Earhart, Erwin Rommel, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Richard Wright, Jack Johnson, Theodore Roosevelt, Steve Jobs, James Stockdale, Laura Ingalls Wildem, Barack Obama. Some of these men and women faced unimaginable horrors, from imprisonment to debilitating illnesses, in addition to day-to-day -day frustrations that were no different from ours. They dealt with the same rivalries, political headwinds, drama, resistance, conservatism, breakups, stresses, and economic calamities, or worse. 
Subjected to those pressures, these individuals were transformed. They were transformed along the lines that Andy Grove, former CEO of Intel, outlined when he described what happens to businesses in tumultuous times. Bad companies are destroyed by crisis. Good companies survive them. Great companies are improved by them. Great individuals, like great companies, find a way to transform weakness into strength. It's a rather amazing and even touching feat. They took what should have held them back, what in fact might be holding you back right this very second, and used it to move forward. As it turns out, this is one thing all great men and women of history have in common. Like oxygen to a fire, obstacles became fuel for the blaze that was their ambition. Nothing could stop them. They were, and continue to be, impossible to discourage or contain. Every impediment only served to make the inferno within them burn with greater ferocity. These were people who flipped their obstacles upside down, who lived the words of Marcus Aurelius and followed a group which Cicero called the only real philosophers, the ancient Stoics, even if they've never read them. They had the ability to see obstacles for what they were, the ingenuity to tackle them, and the will to endure a world mostly beyond their comprehension and control. Let's be honest, most of the time we don't find ourselves in horrible situations we must simply endure. Rather, we face some minor disadvantage or get stuck with some less than favorable conditions. Or we're trying to do something really hard and find ourselves outmatched, overstretched, or out of ideas. Well, the same logic applies. Turn it around, find some benefit, use it as fuel. It's simple, simple but of course not easy. This is not a book of gushing, hazy optimism. This is not a book that tells you to deny when stuff sucks or to turn the other cheek when you've been completely screwed over. There will be no folksy sayings or cute but utterly ineffectual proverbs. This is also not an academic study or history of Stoicism. There is plenty written about Stoicism out there, much of it by some of the wisest and greatest thinkers who ever lived. There is no need to rewrite what they have written. Go read the originals. No philosophic writing is more accessible. It feels like it was written last year, not last millennium. But I have done my best to collect, understand, and now publish their lessons and tricks. Ancient philosophy never cared much for authorship or originality. All writers did their best to translate and explain the wisdom of the greats as it has been passed down in books, diaries, songs, poems and stories. All of these refined in the crucible of human experience over thousands of years. This book will share with you their collective wisdom in order to help you accomplish the very specific and increasingly urgent goal we all share. Overcoming obstacles. Mental obstacles. Physical obstacles. Emotional obstacles. Perceived obstacles. We face them every day and our society is collectively paralyzed by this. If all this book does is make facing and dismantling such stumbling blocks a little easier, it will be enough. But my aim is higher. I want to show you the way to turn every obstacle into an advantage. <laughs>